another round 11. Yesterday they had one, I believe it was versus Mind Freak, that you definitely could have said they, they, they could have won. Here's another example here. And oh my goodness, the play developing already could spell disaster if you're a C9 fan. Let's see Lacefield inside. You see the mini map. Oh God, does Apathy, earn his, does Apathy earn his payload with this plant? Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be darn close. If Apathy earns his payload with this plant, it could change how this entire game. Ah, uh, assault pre-aim. First two kills though, go to Envy. FTL jump ready to go as well. Lacefield doing his best to just stay alive and keep this as a potential round for Cloud9. Does get two kills, but it's him by himself. 30 seconds remaining, he's nowhere near his payload. Slasher's in a perfect spot. Cloud9, who have another lead, up 5-3, to three, throw it away, Envy up 6-5, and some of our animals are just shaking their head, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Aix, Aix needs a kill here. Yeah. If he wants camo, he needs a kill. Massive advantage here for MF when it comes to the payloads. Streak shouldn't be that important here. And we're gonna see Aix right away get the bomb down. Mind Freak not gonna challenge anybody. They rotate around the center of the map, though, and look for your first kill. Lacefield could be in trouble, and Shox is going to find him. So they give him camo so he can actually get bombed down. Now you see both players use camo at the same exact time. Shox goes for the back. Ricky in the kill feed able to pick up one. There's just going to be one player alive for Cloud9. It's going to be all up to Ricky as his teammates fall, and he's going to drop, and it's going to be Mind Freak taking map number two and a 2-0 lead here against Cloud9. I thought it was all gonna come down to that battle of the first bloods. Oh my God. Here we go. Round 11, unbelievable stuff there from Attach. What? Showing why many consider him to be an S&D god, but kills going back and forth. Three versus three now, it's Attach, mid-map. He's feeling strong, he's feeling confident, but it's Zuma around the back. He's got an E-Rat up close, he's able to spot one Jack. And he's, they're, they're both trying to play their life. The aggressive play onto the bomb. He's got to get out now. He's got players watching over him with the AR. Three versus three. So neck and neck towards his sight. Now the gunfights could go down the middle. Attach peaks right to the gun of Looney. Two versus three. He gets caught sprinting. You got to go gun up there, right? You have to be gun up to try and make a play. Uh, assist comes through for enable. It's now one versus two. 45 seconds to go. This is, this is, te no. Now this is textbook for Rise Nation. You plant. You fall back to bowling. You can't lose this situation. You should not lose this situation. And this is the most common situation on this map now, in this one versus two. All right, he has to somehow find a pick and be able to get away. Does he check in top window? Looks like he wants to go back through the bowling side of the map, get in behind. The timing could end up working out well. Will the kill be there to be traded? A nope. couple shots in, he's got 20 nope. seconds left and he's gone. Rise Nation able to tie it up at one to one. He's feeling envy. Here we go, Matt. Round 11. Apathy with the only payload. Bant so close to getting his reactive as well. Apathy in first. Going to stop the splice push. Picks up one. Pops the reactive. Finds the second. There's still a third here. And he will clean up all three. Down to zero once again. 1v2. And it's all done. Envy keeps the dream alive. And I feel like if you're Splice, you have to know that he has reactive armor. Like, why go over and challenge in a small bomb site like Showers? Here we go. Lacefield, he's had a monster game, 10 and 7. The reactive armor will prove huge. But remember, Slasher on the opposite side has that camo to work with. Who's going to be the player to find the opening pick? If you're, I mean, if you're Apathy, if you're Slasher, uh -oh. Oh. you cannot die before you get to use these abilities. Another thing to point out too, Aix to plant a kill away. Still possible for him to earn this active camo. Apathy spotted one. What do the Blue Arrows of Envy do? What do the Blue Arrows of Envy do? Right now, okay, it will prompt rotation, but Cloud9 are getting cheeky with it. They're going for everything. And look, they dropped the Centurion to watch their flank. So they put, they put, they invested in this B play. Now they're going back and now watch the Blue Arrows this. from Envy. I love this. I love this. And now you're going to the plant. Remember, what do you say? A plant He's to a kill more than likely. So Jcap knows it's coming. Now, how does Envy play this? Two are going to hit the flank. One's going to wrap back. So they're going to try and hit a pitch. Actually, they're going to hit through mid-map. So the Slasher. Centurion gets destroyed. Now Slasher pops the camo. He is going to try and flank from behind. Surprise! There's two. Slasher with the play. Three. The fourth. Just barely alive. And Salt is done. Cloud9's dreams of top three gone. You do have Bance with reactive armor and Jerd with FTL jump. 
you expect Mind Freak to be able to win this with all the utility they have. Mind Freak's undefeated in round 11 so far in the GPL. They beat Cloud9 yesterday, but this time around, they are down a man. Jerd goes flying up with the FTL jump. Fighter is there to trade. It's a 1v1. Fighter versus Mad Cat, and Mind Freak is going to clutch up, Matt. They were down big and come storming back in the second half of this game. Optic Gaming, they made it work pretty much effortlessly. We're going to see that B hit. Optic's going to go all A. It looks like they'll spread middle. Watson's throwing down the Centurion, so they don't need to keep a flanker in the back. But they will have Reedy there anyway. And here comes the kill. Zed is going to fly through with Raided. They pick off Krim. Defenders trying to fight through Barn. It's Scump challenging first. He wins the 1v1 versus Watson. Zed trades. Raided. Picked by Formal, and Zed takes down Karma. So it's now a two-on-one. Formal, last man standing. Can he clutch this? Makes it a 1v1. Only Reedy left alive, and Reedy with the FTL jump here. Well, Reedy just needs to waste as much time as possible. Formal has to hunt down this kill. Keep in mind that Centurion should be nearby. Actually, that did get taken down earlier, but again, Reedy just trying to waste time. Formal's got to go on the hunt. The position that bomb is in is incredibly difficult to defuse from, and now Formal's going back, but Reedy, he just made the right play. Oh, Formal, man. there is nothing cooking for him here. The FTL jump to get out with your life, and that is going to be Elevate taking the round 11 with this sneaky strat over towards B. They do what they couldn't pull off yesterday. Elevate finishes off Optic in Search and Destroy. Another big kill, though, was actually Watson, who stayed alive inside you. Got two. And he did get two. So they're going to do the same thing Optic just did. Drop that Centurion down at A, and then play for a four-man stack at B. This is such a smart setup from Elevate. They're ready on this site. Karma might be the first one to show himself, as he's already looking for this first kill. But no, Zed with the first blood. Two-piece on the Scump. And there will be no second camo for Karma in this game. All right, now who's going to clutch up? You have man advantage right now for Elevate. They're trying to back him up. Here comes the Flood. GG. Who's going to win these gunfights? They're swarming what? up. No, Formal and Krim come up with the gunfights. Now going to be 1v1. Formal first right. The push comes in. And Formal wins the 1v1. How? What the hell just happened? How? That, that, how? It's I said GG. I was like, oh, there's no way they win this. Well, it's three. You have them pinned in the back rock in, like, the back alley. I, on defense, sorry, uh. On offense here, we will see Fnatic. Okay, so they're gonna. This is what Cloud9 tried Actually, to do that's the, the other Cloud day. Nine, right? So they had the Centurion watch the back. Here he goes. Push here he goes. Front. He needs to get a kill here. He has to at least find one. He is able to get it and get away with his life. But another team kill. Why do you keep doing this, Fnatic? In around. Okay. All right. Well, they actually they're able to take out the reactive of phase. So you do have a two v two situation. Wuskin still alive. Does not have his ability. Scraps had used his camo. Attach has been clutch all of game five. Can he do it again? He's 13 and six. Him and Wuskin have been going toe to toe. 2v2. 40 seconds remaining here. Bomb going to be in the hand of Wuskin. And Abel, oh, he almost was able to spot one in the back. For now, dancing around each other. Attach gets tagged, but able to get away. He's challenged, though. Scraps trying to kill. Now, Enable. One versus two, 25 seconds to go. Can he stop a potential bomb plant here if he peeks the edge? What are they doing? There's, there's only 19 seconds They left. have to plant the bomb. Oh, man. They have to plant the bomb. And Abel only has to find get, one kill he here. he gets one here, it's over. Here he goes. This timing could be perfect for him. It could be perfect for him. But he gets spotted, and they get it! Fnatic takes it, baby! Not textbook play, but Fnatic able to clutch it up. They take that one in round 11. Not to be a camo fest in round 11. Which player makes the bigger impact? That's what it's all going to come down to, TP. Invisible battles are always fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it starts. It early. I like the play. Use it first. Get some sort of advantage with it. Drops down on the bomb site. Oh, the God. team kill comes in. One versus three. What? One situation. Oh, my God. Double a kill with kill the and then double I, kill for shit. I don't know what's going on. Slack versus Nolson. Slack. Versus Nolson. After all of that, it was a one v four, a team kill, a two piece grenade, and Slack has seen where he is. Is this about to be the greatest collapse in around eleven? From what I've seen, he's on the right side of the bomb though. Slack will be able to react right away. FTL jump doesn't even need to use it. What a throwaway by Millennium! What a throwaway by Millennium! As Brycey is crying real tears in his home right now in the UK. No. What just happened? That I. What just happened?